Dr. Fizz, theoretical physics complex integration example two. We're going to do this integral here where a is greater than zero and m is greater than zero. And we're going to use our complex integration techniques. Let's organize our procedure into three steps. Step one, find your poles. So here is the anthogram. No problem with the numerator. The denominator though, when we set it equal to zero, will reveal two poles z squared plus a squared, that factors easily, z plus ia times quantity z minus ia, set that equal to zero, and the poles show up, ia, and the second pole, z2, is equal to minus ia. Step two, know where to close, know where to close the deal. Choose your semicircle. Now, in the previous section, we show that the semicircle gives you a zero result, uh, because the r you know gets bigger and bigger and we want to make sure that this exponential is not going to mess us up so here's the trick you look along the y axis here the imaginary axis along the imaginary axis you'll have i times your radius now i times your radius means up here e to the i m z when you put in for z i r you then get i times i is minus, you get minus mr when r goes to infinity, no problem from that. However, the lower one here with the minus i r, when your radius is down here, that would give you an e to the plus mr and that would mess you up. So you can close here. But I include this because sometimes you need to close down below instead of closing up. See, the uh, semicircle general argument I gave earlier works whether you close above or below when you have like the 1 over uh, something. And here we just want to make sure that this exponential doesn't interfere with that. So we close along the top, and that means we're going to have one pole, the IA. And step three, sum your residues. Use the residue theorem. So that pole up here is IA. So therefore the integral will be 2 pi i times the residue of the function evaluated here for the z1 equals IA. Well, here's our function. So what do we do when we evaluate the residue? We kick out the uh, pole. Here's the uh, pole as IA. That comes from the z minus IA. We kick that out, throw that out, and everything else we evaluate that where z equals ia. And we do that, we get here e to the minus ma, and down in here we get ia plus ia to ia, and then we need to slap on the 2 pi i, and when we slap on the 2 pi i, the 2 cancels, the i cancels, we get this neat result pi over a times e to the minus m a. And then we note that if we use the real imaginary trick that we have the result for the cosine of mx because the, the sine of mx that is zero since our result is real but we knew this would be zero anyway because here you have an even function and you have the odd numerator and that's going to give you zero for symmetry reasons.